Okay, welcome everyone and thank you for joining me. Just realising I have got a bit of a tilt. Oh, I could really do with a team <laughs> to video and do the lighting and everything, but I do my best. So hello and welcome to another special health focus. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, for joining me today. We're looking at the 24 International Simplified Competition Tai Chi form. <laughs> uh, I wish, well we call it the 24 form because that's quicker. Right hand in fist please, left hand straight, pull back the thumb with feet together, hands together. We salute Shu Sam Hao and you can say Lao Shu Hao and that's students hello teacher hello bit of formality just at the beginning let's begin with um, a triple burner exercise that's just designed to open up the energy as always i'd like you to do only what you can comfortably if anything hurts if it scares you adapt or just leave it out okay so this is the first movement of the eight brocades qigong we're going to release belly hips knees we're going to link the fingers together if you can lift and turn at the chest lift the chin as you press forwards and up looking through your hands lift the hands lower the chin and gently lengthen your body release softly and release through the belly the hips and the knees to repeat the whole process we cross the fingers we lift and turn press forwards and up lift the chin keep breathing lower the chin as we lengthen up and stretch and softly calmly relax down now um you could do this nine times you could do it six times you could do it three times we'll do it three times we press forwards and up look through the hands lift the hands lower the chin lengthen and release relax down very good and just ease yourself into movement release from your stance beautiful so that is our triple burner little exercise for today the triple burner is a way of warming your body someone said to me i'm cold <laughs> before we started today so triple burner exercises are very good to kick start the the warmth uh, throughout your body especially if you do multiple repetitions today we just hello dear <laughs> today we just did a very little bit um as i don't know at what level you're feeling capable of today but you can always repeat it's a nice gentle and simple exercise good so now we go on to our four corners into the hips and breathe Cats just love Tai Chi. <laughs> I have noticed this. Any animal, pretty much, um, if you start doing Tai Chi around them, they just they'll come and snuggle or just sit and chill out with you. It's very sweet. Yesterday, my husband and I did a bit of standing practice, and the cats came and meditated with us. <laughs> they didn't quite do standing, but they did comfortable, relaxed cat, and that was really sweet. Good, so gently does it into the four corners. Notice how everything feels. Good, let's change direction. Just playing peekaboo and breathe. Very good. One time uh, when I was teaching a gentleman farmer and we were practicing outside in a field and there was a family of donkeys a mummy a daddy and a baby donkey and they just came and they were transfixed <laughs> just stood um, very close but just interested but very chilled out while we practiced it's a really nice moment good all right so let's warm the legs a little bit more we're going to step forwards now see how you get on with this one i'm going to teach it a slightly different way let's keep our feet parallel if you can 
and we're going to gently scoot one leg forwards, a little kick forwards and bring the foot down. Now that kick is designed to keep you in alignment as opposed to stepping wide. So we should feel quite narrow actually. And now we're going to do our little forwards and backwards. Rowing the boat, if you like. Good. Now we have a variation of this that Grandmaster Chen does or has done, which is going a little bit further down. And then into a leg stretch. So let's go into the leg stretch. So we feed the weight back, bring the hands to just above the knee and keep the knee relatively straight. We want to lengthen the spine. So we're not bending the back, we're lengthening the back and hinging forwards from the hips. And just see if you can keep a nice crisp line, straight line in the back, straight line in the leg, gently fold forwards. And keep breathing. Now you'll know if it's asking too much, if so, ease off as long as you get a little bit of a stretch, that's enough. Let's release and pull those toes back. And if you can take hold with the same side hand as foot, take hold and again, try to keep the legs straight. If you can't reach, don't worry, just keep both hands above the knee. And we relax the foot down, feed the weight forwards and up you come. Lovely. Now I'm going to show you the same thing sideways on on the other side. So we keep the feet parallel if you can and we scoot the leg, the opposite leg out and put the foot down. Now because we're keeping the feet parallel <laughs> you may feel a little bit more wobbly. So for safety if you do feel wobbly it's good to have a chair or a wall or something that you can hold on to near to you. So we're going to do our little rowing the boat movement, keep breathing, focusing your eyes on a point ahead. Good, and you can think of going a little bit lower, a little bit lower, a little bit lower, and feed the weight back, hands to just above the knee. Lengthen your spine, Encourage the leg to stay straight and very gently, you can hinge forwards from the hips. Again, keeping the spine nice and straight, keep breathing. Good, and release the front toes. If you can, pull the toes back and same side hand to foot, if you can comfortably reach. The aim of the game in Tai Chi is not to hurt yourself, but to help everything get better. So if you can't comfortably reach, don't just keep your hands above your knee. As long as you feel a stretch, that's good. Good, relax the foot down, feed the weight forwards, and up you come. Good, and let's ease out of the stance and just do a little bit of freestyle movement. I quite like this kind of, I don't know what you would call that, like little pedal machine type movement in between exercises, just pressing one heel down and peeling the other heel up. Good. And let's take a little shake. Good, and breathe. All right, so, Let's stand on one leg and we want to keep the hips level and we're going to send a gentle spiral down through the leg into the foot. But I don't want you to bend your ankle overly like that, but rather let it be a little bit flexible, but keep the structure all the way down. 
Good, and can you change direction? Keep breathing. I asked Rosie to be my teaching assistant today and she's really trying very hard. <laughs> Thank you, Rosie. Okay, and shaking out, please, on the other side. Good, and change direction. Try to keep those hips level. So you could actually do this work seated if you wanted to. Good, and did we do both directions? No, change direction. Did we do? Ah, uh, I was too busy talking, Never mind. Okay, good. Once you've done both directions, shake out. We could, of course, do the ankles and wrists together, but today we'll do them separately. So lace your wrists, please, and rotate from your center. It doesn't mean you have to do a big movement, but always in Tai Chi, we want to think of movement coming from center. Think of it, that's where the pivot is. That's where the uh, center of the seesaw is. Good, and change direction. You doing your exercises? <laughs> Good. She's showing us old cat washes its face. We haven't got there yet. Good, and shaking out. Well done, folks. Um, so hopefully you feel nice and warm. We'll do one more little arm exercise, little bounce. <laughs> Good. And just circle again, just as high as is comfortable. Work within your comfortable means. But if you can, you can go a good bit bigger. Good. And change direction. And it's quite nice to start small and get bigger. It's also nice to start big, uh, or rather get bigger and then go smaller again. Good, and we'll just finish with a little bit of shoulder rotation. Breathe. Think of grinding your shoulder blades together at the back. And if you get crunches and crackles, that's great. <laughs> Change direction. And just to finish, we'll do a little bit of shoulder walking. One at a time. And change direction. Good, let's come back into the center and just lift your shoulders towards your ears. Breathe in and breathing out. Softly release. And again, breathing in, lift. And softly release. One more time, breathe in. And release. Good. If you just want to give your head a few little half circle rolls, just check the neck is nice and loose. Good, and back to centre and float up. Beautiful, relax down into your belly. Now, it would be lovely if we had an hour and a half, we could do a half hour stand or even a 20 minute stand. But we have limited time in this class. So we're just going to do a slightly longer preparation. So let's bring our feet together just for a few moments or close, doesn't have to be right up against each other. Float up, please, through the top of the head and the chin slightly down and back. And we'll just take a few moments to arrive. And calm down. Listen behind you. It's 
find all 10 fingertips and very gently press them down towards the earth. See, can you feel all 10 fingers evenly? And just be patient. And then we release through belly, hips and knees, filling your right foot, emptying your left foot and mirroring, you step open to your left and shift your weight into your center. So this is your preparation position for the form. We call the opening move qi si, open. So we keep the top of the head floating up, we keep the chin slightly down and back. We want to feel a lengthening up the back of the neck. Think of the rest of the body as melting, like very thin paint spreading out and gliding down with gravity. You can literally think of the soft tissue of your body as melting and spreading out and pouring downwards. Just keeping the top of the head floating up. Now, if you wanted to practice your stand or even wuji, you could pause this recording and I share it as a recording and just continue to stand in this position. Keep listening, keep feeling and keep melting through any tension. Simply listening, feeling, letting go. Good, and we're going to begin our 24 form. So I'm going to do it the same as you, back view. We're going to float up on the in-breath to shoulder height, palms facing down, breathing out, release the center and let that draw your arms down to about dandian height, level with uh, mid-hip. Take right hug wall and gather the left foot in. We step to the side and slightly back. And we turn left and right as we separate wild horse's mane. We feed the weight back and turn, forwards and in. Step two. So I'm not breaking all the details down now. You can look back at our previous videos for that, but just taking three steps, separate wild horses mate. Now we stay forwards and we take a half step, feed the weight back and make a left hug ball, small hug ball. We turn to the right and sweep the right hand up. We untwist, the left hand sweeps down and we relax to centre for Old Cat washes its face. Uh, so white crate. Old Cat washes its face, pull the toes in. We need more space to do three further steps forwards. So you may need to give yourself space. And step, brush knee and push, relax to centre. Back, turn, forwards and in. Step, Brush knee push, back, turn, forwards and in. One more time, step, brush knee push, stay forwards, take a half step, feed the weight back, right shoulder back, left arm lifts and relax down into play guitar. No weight on the front foot. We go into Step back, repulse, monkey. Reach, draw in, step back, heel in, toes in. We do four steps back in all, keeping the weight going back, not going forwards again. 
step back. Good, and I'm off screen, so here, <laughs> good. Your fourth step back, your pulse monkey. We keep the weight back, lift the back heel, turn on the balls of the foot as the arms come underneath and up into right hug ball. Well done, and we'll rest there. Take a breath. Good, now let's do that again. Just exactly the same, I'd like you to get into a rhythm. Now, before we started recording, I asked you to give me feedback. We're going to look at this in a few different ways. So I will do a front view, um, mirrored view. I think when it comes to working side, um, you know, if we're traveling sideways, that gets very confusing, very fast. So um, I'll maybe adapt it and I might do a little bit without the turns as well. So we remain facing forwards at all times. So it is a little bit different, but you can imagine if we were in a room together, um, sometimes I would come around in front of you so that you could see the front view. So um, in effect, that's what, I'm, what I have an idea of doing for you. But first, let's just do everything we just did again. Uh, nice and smooth relax don't worry if you make mistakes don't worry if you're running out of space just take two steps back if you need to at any stage and join in again all right here we go yeah so prepare lengthen up through the top of the head chin down and back deep breath and calm down. Open. Raising the water. Three times, separate wild horses may. White crane opens its wings. Old cat washes its face. And let's step back and step back and step back and step back and prepare for brush knee push. So we can actually choreograph in that giving ourselves space. Half step, right shoulder back, relax, play guitar. Four times, step back, repulse monkey. I'll be off screen. <laughs> okay, so we've done the fourth step back. Turn. Right hug ball. Well done. And rest. Good. Take a breath. Lovely. Okay, I'm going to give you a moment's break. You can have a wee drink if you want. You can have a rest for a moment. I'm going to have a drink. Um, and then what we might do, just for clarity, Cheers. I'm on warm almond milk today with nutmeg and cinnamon and black pepper and ginger. <laughs> it's very nice. Um, yeah, what I might do now with you is front view and mirrored without turns. So if you have missed some of the earlier classes or if you're still not quite sure about palm position, about hands in relation to the body, this will help a little bit and also it's useful for neural plasticity. 
So we will do steps, but we won't do turning. And this is also gonna be a workout for me mentally. So please bear with me if it's a bit rough. So let's try, we'll bring our feet together. So I'm now facing you, so I'm going to mirror. So this is your left, this is your right. Um, don't worry too much about it. Don't think in terms of left and right, just see if you can copy. So if I do this, you lift the same side. All right, so with feet together, we lengthen up. Lengthen the fingers down, calming down. Listening behind. Let's release belly, hips, knees. Fill your right foot, empty your left. Step open and transfer. Breathe in, float up. Shoulder height, relax down, release the belly and let that drag the arms down. Now, for these purposes, we're going to turn out the right foot to the corner and grasp hug ball. Step diagonally forwards and separate wild horse's mane. Feed it back, turn forwards and hug ball. Step, separate. Good. And again, back, turn forwards, hug ball. Step and separate. Now stay where you are. Okay, so we're going to take a half step with the back foot, literally half the size of your stance, feed the weight back and turn towards your upper hand. So there's your small hug ball, lower hand swipes up, upper, uh, the hand now pointing to the elbow comes down and release the front foot. So the weight is on the back foot, Old cat washes its face, we point to the elbow, point to the elbow and bring the front foot in. Pressing the palms down, look forwards and step, brush around the knee and relax to centre. Feed back, turn, forwards, hand brings the foot, foot brings the hands, brush knee and push. Last time back, turn, forwards and up, step, brush knee and push. The back foot takes a half step, we feed the right shoulder back, left arm lifts and we relax down onto the front foot heel. I know you can't see it, front foot heel, hand above foot, elbow above knee, shoulder above hip. We release Drop the front toe down, reach to the corner, and hand and foot come in. Step, heel in, front toe in. Continue, lift the heel, draw in. Step, put the foot down, feed the weight back, fix your front toe. Reach, draw in, step back, bring the foot down, feed the weight back, fix the front toe. Last time, reach, draw in, step, heel, and toe. Swing the arms down and up into the right hug ball. Well done and rest. Take a breath. Now, hopefully, for at least some of you, that was useful. <laughs> um, I know it can be a bit confusing as soon as I change anything. I know all about it. As soon as anything is changed, it, it can be confusing, but it may be useful even as reference that you can look back and see what these movements do. Most of the movements so far we do on both sides anyway, so um, there is a good chance that you'll get it right. <laughs> okay, are there any questions or anything? <laughs> Comments? Mm, no? Okay, good. All right, so we have done back view, we have done uh, altered front view. Um, why don't I now show you the front view 
unaltered, so it's not mirrored or anything, but just to see it from a different angle as is. So it's an opportunity for you now, please, if you wish, to come and sit down and have a rest, or you can you could do it with me if you like, you could mirror it, you choose. But I'm going to show you what it looks like just from the front view um, as is. So if you were sitting in the audience and someone were performing the 24 form up to Grasping Bird's Tail, this is what it should look like, or my best attempt, shall we say. Watch please as I show you the next movement that we're about to look at and this is called Grasping Bird's Tail and I know I'm a bit far from you so I'm going to show you that again as close as I dare without falling off the screen. So from hug ball, pung, lu, g and am. We're going to do that on both sides. So a little linking step, casting the net, and repeat. Pung. Lu. G. And an. So that's our next little movement in the form. I just want to check in with you. Are you all happy now to have a little look or an introduction to Pang Lu Jian? Yes. Great. Okay. So everyone I can see <laughs> has said yes. Not everyone has their, um, their, their video on. Okay, folks. So Pang Lu Jian, now we have entered into a new realm within this form. This sequence known as so, uh, Lan Chu Wei, Lan Chu Wei, meaning grasping the bird's tail, um, is made up of four separate steps. Peng, meaning expand, like a balloon expanding. Lu, which means to roll back or smooth down. Ji, which means to press. And An, which is a change of direction. It's like an ocean wave in all its um, aspects. Now, uh, actually, Peng Lu Ji An are not 
only this sequence, but they are, if you like, um, syllabus um, aspects. They are expressions. So they can be expressed in different ways. They are four out of 13 movements that make up all movements of Tai Chi. So just to take a moment to, to soak that up. We're doing four out of 13 movements that make up all the movements that we do in Tai Chi. So this is a very densely packed little bundle of movements. Uh, now you could kind of waft your way through them and that's fine, but I want you to make sure that uh, you're getting at least the legwork absolutely right because it's all too easy to, um, to strain your body by doing these movements incorrectly. So we, we know empty stance, don't we? Empty stance means no weight on the front foot. So you could do heel, you could do toe, you could do hovering just off the floor. Empty stance is your weight back. Bow stance tends to be the weight forwards. But when we get to Peng Liu Ji An or grasping bird's tail, we're actually going to cut the bow stance into three very distinct sections into three levels of being forward. So the first one for Pung is not really much forward at all. Really, it's your feet pretty much 50-50, maybe slightly more weight on the front foot. So you can see there is Pung. Can you see that my knee is actually above the very center of my foot, above the main arch of the foot? So bow stance must be square. The hips are square to your direction. So if I'm doing it facing you, my hips are facing you. They're not off to the side somewhere. So that is bow stance. First bow stance, pung. You're nearly 50-50. Just think of expanding between your legs. You are between your legs, knee above the center of your foot. We'll call that bow stance one. One, okay. Bow stance two, let's just look at the bow stances without the sequence, yeah. Bow stance two is a little bit further forwards, but not all the way forwards. So bow stance two is um, in G, we use it in G, and that is when your knee is above the knuckles of your feet, the metatarsal arches of your feet. So you're not, can you see, my knee is not as far as the tips of my toes. If you see the black of my trousers, it's the knee is above the black, not above the white tip. So that is bow stance two, and that would be G. That's a, a more of a feeling of forwardness than, than bow stance one, but there's still that little white tip of my toe left. I haven't gone all the way forwards. Bow stance three, you can see where we're going with this, I hope is all the way forward so the knee is above but not beyond the tip of the toe. So now the black trouser of my knee is above the white tip of the toe. If you had a plumb line, there should be absolutely straight line between them. I'll show you incorrectly. Do you see that's too far? That's putting pressure on the knee. The knee won't be happy. And sometimes that happens if we're not square in the hip the knee goes way too far. So don't let it go too far. We want for both stance three, the knee above, but not beyond the tips of your toes. Good, so I'd like you to write that down, <laughs> get a Tai Chi diary and write for yourself, grasping bird's tail, three bow stances, one weight between the feet, knee above the arch of the foot, the main arch of the foot, two, knee above, the knuckles of the foot, the metatarsal arch, and three, the knee above the tips of the toes, but not beyond, not further than. And in that way, we're keeping our knees safe. Now, why have I just talked about this in such detail? Because in this form, in this section, there are times where we move forwards and then straight away we move forwards again. That's very unusual in Tai Chi. Normally we go forwards and then we go back. But if we go forwards without thinking and go all the way forwards and then go forwards again, we've gone too far. So we have to um, budget 
our amount of going forwards in order to protect our knees and express the correct uh, intent within the movement. Okay, so we'll do a little bit of the arm work. But before we do, let's just try it on the other side. We do this form, this sequence on both sides. So take your other foot forwards, please. Start an empty stance and let's go between the two feet. So your knee is above the center of your foot. Okay, let's try position two, the knee above the knuckles of the feet. How do you know? I don't want you to look down. Don't try to measure it with your eyes. Go by feel. Can you feel the weight? Can you feel a connectedness? Feel for, oh yes, I can feel my knee is connecting with the, uh, the metatarsal arch, the knuckles. There's a feeling of weightedness in the knuckles. Okay, now try position three. Go all the way forwards so the knee is above the tips of the toes. Can you feel to the tips of your toes? You'll feel the weight is going more into it. Good, and feed the weight back. So that's something to play with. Practice feeling your position rather than looking down because your head is not above your knee. It shouldn't be above your knee. It should be straight up. So looking down will not help in this. Feel your way. Let's try it again. Empty stance. We go into between the two feet. Feel the feeling of expansion. That's what pung means, to expand. Now go a little bit for, further forwards. Feel the knuckles of your feet. Do you feel the intensity? You're connecting with the knuckles. Good. And further forward again. It's like a centimeter, maybe, depending on how big your feet are. Can you feel to the tips of your toes? That's position three. Well done, and back into empty. Good, relax. So it's not as um, simple as we go one, two, three in the form. If you watch me, please, I start facing front, I turn, and I go into position one. But now I go straight into position three, all the way to the end, and back to empty. Then I go into position two, in press, G. So I'm above my knuckles, then into three, back to empty, and all the way to three. So it's a little bit more complex than one, two, three. Okay, so let's have a little look at Pung. Well, maybe just, I want you to practice with that. Um, we could take a whole hour on just Grasping Bird's Tail. In fact, we could do several weeks just on Grasping Bird's Tail. So we'll just, I want you to play with those stances for next week. Become aware of the connection, become aware of the degree of forwardness that you're at and more in control. So you can practice empty stance, first, third, empty, second, third, empty, third. Try it on the other side. It's a brain teaser, isn't it? So ready? So we step first between the feet, third, knee above toes, all the way back, empty, second, knuckles, third, tips of toes, empty, third. Yeah, could you play with that? So it's a brain teaser and as I say your feet probably aren't that big so we're talking centimeters maybe inches of movement, maybe millimetres if you've got small feet like me. It's not much and yet it makes all the difference in the world. Otherwise the temptation is to go three and then where can you go? You have to go forwards again so you're going to hurt your knees or put your knees at risk. So it's very, very important that we polish the details and the nuances of this movement. So let's just have one look at Pung today. Let's look at the arm movement of Pung. So let's face each other just um, so that you can see clearly. So we start, we're facing the corner. We haven't gone into Pung yet, we've just done our step. But now we're going to square up and as we square up the lower hand comes up 
and the hand that was on top comes a little down. So now one hand is about level with your throat. Do you notice that my arm is on an angle? It's not straight like this. My elbow is dropped. And the other hand is about level with your opposite hand elbow and the fingers are pointing towards the center of the palm. That's pung. So you can see it from the side. It should feel rounded and contained and the elbows should feel droopy and relaxed. So let's try it again. From hug ball facing the corner, we're going to step forwards, we're going to square up and have a feeling of expansion, pung. Good, and again, hug ball, step and expand. Good, and again, hug ball, step and expand. So we finish one hand about level with the throat and the other hand about level with the opposite elbow, fingers pointing up towards the logong, towards the center of your raised hand. Well done, let's do it on the other side. So we have a hug ball, we step and expand, pung. Lower arm comes up, arm that was up comes down a little, one hand in line with the throat, one hand level with the elbow. Repeat please, hug ball. The rear hand is up, the hand closest to the front is down. We step and expand. It should feel round, it should feel quite close to you, but a feeling like a balloon is expanding in your arms. Check your weight, it should be between your two feet, your knee above the center of your front foot. Try again. And pung. Good, beautiful. One more time, please. Make sure the body remains beautifully upright, relaxed, like it's uh, hanging from a clothes hanger and your, your body is draping heavy clothes. So it's always hanging downwards with gravity. Don't be tempted to bend your back or lean. Ready? We step and pump. Beautiful, last time. And pump. Well done and rest. Good, we're going to do a five minute little relaxation. So I'd like you just to shake out. Remember your homework, please. Practice first, second and third bow stance. Even if you just practice them like that. First, second, third, empty. That's a good start. First, second, third, empty. Just so that you're getting familiar. It's like gears. If you drive a car with gears, you want to be able to work through the gears. Then as you get more confident, then you can learn the sequence of first, third, empty, second, third, empty, third. It's a lot. <laughs> but if you're familiar and comfortable and can easily get into each of the positions uh, and can own them, then this work will become a lot easier. So come together, please. And uh, do you know what? We'll, we'll, do a, we'll do a moving relaxation. So we just very gently turn. This is your Chinese drum exercise. Again, we want to keep the body floating at the top of the head and suspended, hanging down, very relaxed. You can think of twisting the thread at the top of the head and that turns the body and the arms effortlessly then turn. Good. So this should not be that you're swinging your arms, but rather you're turning your body and your arms are so relaxed, they naturally move. Let's go down to the legs, cup your hands. Knees. Lower legs, if you can reach. Feet. And up the body again. Good. 
good. Shoulders. Remember to just work within your comfortable limits. If you know it's not right for you, don't do it. Good, and return to center. And we're going to soften the movement and slow the movement down. Turning center. Now, the same movement, but calmed, is rather like you are running your hands over the surface of water. Feel into your hands. Believe it or not, this is a Chen style exercise developed by Master Chen Faka. Gorgeous, really useful for sensitivity and awareness. Listen to your hands. Feel that resistance in the air. Beautiful, well done. We're going to finish with back to basics. Showering with energy, we breathe in and float the arms up and breathe out, release, relax gently down. Good, and again. Deep breath and suspend your breath at the top. Press your fingers into the sky. Press your toes into the earth. Think of sealing in your good energy and release, relax gently down, guiding your hands to cover center. Hug your elbows in and feel into the touch, into the warmth of your hands flowing into your center. Feel your energy is stronger. Beautiful, well done everyone. Relax your arms down and we'll close. Gosh, you've done ever so well today. <laughs> I, my intention is to always um, balance out movement with relaxation, but there's so much involved in the 24 that we seem to be edging towards the more physical. So I will try very hard to give you a little bit more sort of rest, relaxation, uh, guided relaxation within this class at some stage but I think you're doing ever so well. Please remember at any stage you can always sit, you can always rest. So you take the, the class at the level that you can on the day. So sometimes that may be just resting the whole way and just watching it, and that's absolutely fine. You're still going to learn and you'll get that mirror neuron thing going on. So you'll actually be learning as you're watching. But anyway, I think you're doing really well. I hope you're enjoying the 24 international form. Let's salute. We take right hand in fist, left hand straight, feet together, hands together, and we salute. Thank you very much, folks, and I look forward to seeing you next time.